to Christiana and then to Diane over. Uh, this week I had some um, lovely law of attractions to put into practice what we're learning. Um, I came up uh, with an issue where I thought, okay, now's a really good time to put uh, a brushstroke on it of if this was happening to me, how would I want to um, be treated or whatever. But then I started questioning if my brushstroke uh, is full of addiction and in error opposition to what God would do, um, how does that um, brushstroke work? Well, see, this is where experimentation, the willingness to experiment. See, if you're not so addicted to pain, pain prevention of pain, mm -hmm. the, the, the problem with the addiction of prevention of pain is this. So if pain is my goal, the avoidance of pain, so I'm the, I want to avoid the pain, and that's my only goal, you can see that if I suspect that one course of action will cause more pain, then I'll, then I'll definitely choose to not do that course of action. But if I doubt that another might, I will probably avoid that action too. And so what do I end up doing? Not doing anything. Correct. Which is a sin from God's perspective, right? So, 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 so it, I would be better off, wouldn't I, being prepared to feel pain, taking the action that I think is the right action, not avoiding that action, but taking the action that I think is the right action, and then measure the results. Does that make sense? That would be my better choice, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. But we don't do that because we are addicted to avoiding potential pain. Yeah. So, so, so really this gets down to developing a desire to experiment even if the outcome might be some more pain. Yeah. You see? Now, if the desire to experiment is based upon your desire, your aspiration to grow in love, then, then you won't be addicted to just avoiding pain anymore. So, so even if you chose to do something that was out of harmony with love, you didn't realise it was out of harmony with love, but through the process you learnt that it was, mm -hmm. right? That is better than choosing to not do anything. Yeah. Hmm. Does that answer the question? It's the ir uh, irony of it is that um, I ended up what I was believing to be a, a one thing, um, what I was really going on was that it wasn't anything about that I wanted to be loving or lo not loving, is the fact that I was just so terrified of losing my security and it was had a totally different, completely issue to what was going on. Yeah. So this is what normally happens is that you get... You know, if you do take an action, you do get exposed pretty quickly what the underlying motivation <laughs> for the action was. And that's the beauty of making decisions rather than avoiding making decisions. Yeah. Is that if you make decisions, you'll end up learning something that you didn't know before. Yeah. Right? And that's a very important part of your progress. The key is to measure the results and then make the learn learning <laughs> connection. You see, you make the relationship between cause and effect. This is also what we many avoid. Many of us avoid too, though. So, so unfortunately, we choose to take an action. We don't measure its results, and then we make a whole heap of presumptions. Right. So it, it would be better to. You're actually better off acting, even if acting it was. You, you thought it was in harmony with love, but it turns out it was out of harmony with love. Right. It, you're better off doing that and learning in the process than you are not acting at all. Yeah. Yep. The other lesson that I got was that as soon as I stopped self-punishing, then God was able to talk to me and tell me the real reason. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Self-punishment, honestly, it's a very, it's a, it's a very, it's a learned um, thing that we do from our childhood in order to avoid truth. Not, not to get it, <laughs> right? So we need to see it as such. Yeah. We need to see it as a slippery eel <laughs> <laughs> slipping out of what's really going on. That's what self-punishment's all about. And in fact, self-punishment is very narcissistic. 
right? Because we do something that's unloving to another person generally, and then when they point it out, we punish ourselves further. But but what have we done to help that person? We just harm nothing. In fact, quite often we're wanting something from them. We want them to, what we want them is to, you know, to say, oh, it's all right, you know, it's not that as bad as what you're feeling. In fact, we really just want another addiction met by that person, you know. So, yeah, self, self-punishment is, uh, is a very manipulative tool that we've learnt to use. This is how we learnt to manipulate our parents. Um, it's a manipulative tool in order to avoid the full consequences of our actions and to redress the unloving behaviour with the person involved. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, very negative process, self-punishment. Yeah.